All right, guys, continuing on with the ultrasonic level lab. I believe this is part number three. So now we've got the ultrasonic sensor mounted on the top. Uh, we're at a level of 50 centimeters. So we're at 50 centimeters in our tank. So that's the highest level. And so that ultrasonic sensor has its cable going over to this interface box right here. And we've powered that guy up with 24 volts DC. We've grabbed that 24 volts DC from our 24 volt power supply down here. And we have a link, an RS-232 link right here going to our computer. And the highest level in the tank being 50 centimeters should be the highest current value of a four to 20 milliamp signal. So we should see 20 milliamps on the screen. And in the previous video, we saw that on our Cinex view that we were getting 20 milliamps on the screen here. Excellent. But how do we take a meter reading rather than just relying on the software here to give us our current value? Well, let's grab a meter. So I've grabbed a, a Fluke 175 from the shop. And right now I'm gonna walk you through how to hook this guy up. All right, first thing I want you to notice is I've got the red lead pushed into the 400 milliamp terminal, and I've got the black lead pushed into the common terminal. We're gonna be looking at a four to 20 milliamp signal. So we wanna have a range on the meter that's gonna be appropriate for those values. Okay, so we're on the 400 milliamp terminal and the common. We're gonna be looking at a current value, so we're gonna be connecting up in series with that signal. So first thing we need to do is change this guy over to look at a DC current. So this guy right here is our milliamps. So I'm gonna change this setting right here to milliamps. And I'm doing this while the circuit is dead. Okay, I do not have any power to my ultrasonic sensor right now. If you change that meter setting while the circuit is live and you are connected into that circuit, you will most likely blow the fuse on this fluke. Okay, so now I should be able to see uh, milliamps DC current. But you can see here that I've got milliamps of AC. So what I need you to do now is I need you to press this button right here. And that's going to change from AC to DC. Excellent. Okay, so now we're on to, let's just take a step back. We're on to the 400 milliamp terminal and the common terminal. We're looking at DC current, and we've now pressed that yellow button, and we've changed from the AC milliamps to DC milliamps. All right, let's see how this is connected into our ultrasonic sensor. Okay, so we need to look at the current that's coming from these two terminals right here, the four to 20 milliamp output. I provided this with 24 volts with these two wires right here, but as we're setting everything up, I want you to have the power off. So you'll see that I have my 24 volt power supply off. And I actually have a lead that has dropped out, so let me drop that guy back in there. Uh, but keep your power supply off while you're connecting all of your terminals in for this four to 20 milliamp meter reading. Okay, then once we turn it back on, we'll have to uh, connect back up to our ultrasonic sensor to have an output value come out. Okay, so what we need to do first is we're going to connect in uh, a resistor. So I want to put a resistor into this terminal right here for the positive of my 4 to 20 milliamp output. So we're going to make use of this guy in a little bit. This is a, uh, let me just center in here. Come on, buddy. This is a, a 250 ohm resistor here. And we're going to use this later on to look at and change the four to 20 into a one to five volt signal. But I have this lead right here and you can see that I've soldered in that resistor into that lead. And that way we can limit our current so that we're not shorting out our four to 20 milliamp supply. That one's gonna connect into our red test lead. Give me two seconds to show you how to do that. So again, just to remind you, this test lead right here has a 250 ohm resistor in it. That way we're not going to short out our 4 to 20 supply. And the beauty of these guys is that I can take my red test lead and I can push it into the back of this terminal like that. And that way I've got continuity in the circuit now. Okay, so I have from my positive 4 to 20 milliamp out, I've placed a 250 ohm resistor and now I've connected it, that into the red test lead of my meter and we'll just place it down and just make sure that it's not touching any metal. Um, that red test lead, again, is going into uh, my 400 milliamp terminal here. And then to complete the circuit, I'm gonna take the common connection, or the common terminal, 
and bring it up to the negative of my 4 to 20 milliamp output. Okay, so to complete that circuit, I'm now just going to connect the other side of the meter into the negative terminal of my 4 to 20 milliamp out. So let's take a step back and we'll see this circuit here. I have the output terminal of my 4 to 20 going through a resistor just so I can not short out my 4 to 20 output. Um, I have that connected into my test lead. My test lead is going into the 400 milliamp terminal of my meter. And then to complete the circuit, the common is coming up and connecting into the negative of my 4 to 20 milliamp output. Beautiful. Okay, let's turn this guy on and we'll see what our value is on the meter. Okay, so we've done all of those connections with the power off. Now I'm going to turn the power on. So now we've got 24 volts to the ultrasonic sensor. And now we should have current flowing on our 4 to 20 milliamp signal. And now, oh nice, look at that meter reading. We got 20 milliamps here and that corresponds to the 20 milliamps that we saw on our display. Okay, so let's do the same thing now. We're going to now drop the level down by 10 centimeters and we'll see what our meter measures in current value. Okay, so I'm gonna drop the level in the tank. It's dropping down from 50 down to 40. I'm gonna stop it right when it gets to 40. There we go. Nice, and there's our 16 milliamps. Okay, let me drop it down another 10 centimeters. And you can see that the current value is directly proportional to the level in the tank. Here's my 50% range coming in right now. And at 30 centimeters, I'm seeing 12 milliamps. Right now, let's just move this over. I'm at 30 centimeters. Beautiful. So these meter readings are corresponding to exactly with what we had on our Cinex view on the display of our computer. Okay, let's drop it down another 10 centimeters now. So the level is dropping. The current value is dropping as well. And when we get to 20, we should see 8 milliamps. Okay, so there's my 20. I dropped it down just a touch below, but that's pretty good, right? 7.9 milliamps. And let me drop it down another 10. Hard to get it exact when I'm holding onto the camera and trying to drop the level in the tank at the, at the same time. So here's our 10 centimeters. This is the lowest end of our range. And there's our 4 milliamps out. Okay, so our meter reading is corresponding to exactly with what we had on the display of our computer. Here you can see the output from the RS-232 to the computer, and I have 4 milliamps here. And on my meter here, I have 4 milliamps as well. So everything's giving me the same signal now. So the way that we did this without blowing the fuse was that we connected up a, a connection from the positive output, uh, I put a, a 250 ohm resistor into that circuit. We're going to use this one later on to change that 4 to 20 to a 1 to 5. We just use this so we don't short out our 4 to 20. We had that going into uh, our meter terminal right here. That meter lead was connected into the 400 milliamp terminal right here. The common connection right here went back to our supply to complete the circuit. And again, we were looking at this range right here. So we're on this setting of the meter for DC current. And we had to press this button to change it from AC over to DC current. Oh, we're still in milliamps. Let me change the range one more time. There we go. So there's our four milliamps of DC. All right, guys, hopefully that helps on how to take the, an actual meter reading off of this ultrasonic sensor. The next step is to try and send that signal back into the computer and have the LabVault uh, software show us the actual level in the tank.